Hello, hello. Welcome to Reading Time. My name's Time, and this week we are reading the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Let's get to reading. Harry Potter is a seven book series about a young boy named Harry Potter who finds out that he is a wizard and discovers a whole wizarding world that he is now a part of. The series details his school years at a magical school called Hogwarts and the events and dangers that he faces during those school years, especially those related to facing off against one of the darkest wizards in history. Harry starts the series at 11 years old in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and the books continue until he is 17 years old with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Generally speaking, each of the books gets longer and a bit darker than the previous one as they build off of one another and go more in depth into the wizarding world. Now, I have read this series before. In fact, I've read it multiple times as I was a fan of the series as the last couple books were coming out. But it has been many years since I have actually read through the series again. And so in this read through, I decided to approach it a little bit differently by reading the illustrated editions that are out for the series. As of the posting of this video in December of 2022, there are five illustrated editions. And I'll just show you the most recent one, which is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is book five of the series. So these books are virtually the same as the other written editions, except they are larger in scale, they're wider and taller. And then they have illustrations throughout. So some of the pages are like this where there's just text, but then other pages have like decorated backgrounds or full on illustrations such as this picture of these owls. So the illustrated editions have been really lovely to read through uh, for those first five books, and they really bring to life some of those characters and events that you see in the books. If you're a fan of Harry Potter or if you're interested in the series and would like to read it with younger children, I do think that the illustrated editions add an extra dimension that would make it really enjoyable for those younger readers. As far as rating the series goes, I am going to give it five out of five stars. And part of that may just come from the fact that I've been a fan of the series for many, many years and have really grown to love those stories and characters. However, on this read through, it did really strike me how well written the books are in general and how well developed the characters are and the setting at large. So I stand by my rating. I think that overall this is a five-star series. I will say I do like some books better than others, and the writing does improve as the series goes on, but that is to be expected with most writers. Usually their work improves as they're going. This series does get darker as it goes on, and some of the content is definitely not for younger readers. For violence in the series, this series does have characters who are murdered or die. There's also uh, dueling between characters with the risk of death. There's people who are tortured in the series. So there definitely is a lot of violence. Most of it, though, is um, on the more magical side where it's a spell that causes death and theoretically there's no pain. But as I said, there are also torture spells, and so there's definitely some violence throughout, especially the latter half of the series. For substance usage in this book, there is alcohol that's consumed by various individuals at various points, and they do make potions and poisons throughout the series, and, you know, sometimes there's a risk that it wasn't made correctly, and so there's a risk in consuming or using the tonic created. But I think the most concerning substance usage I would point out is in book six specifically. So in book six, Harry is given some chocolates at one point by an admirer, 
and they are drugged with a love potion. He actually doesn't end up eating them. His best friend Ron does and ends up being drugged by the love potion to fall in love with the character who had sent the chocolates. Now, obviously, there are a lot of issues with this idea of using a love potion to make someone fall in love with you. That also leads into the next section, which is sexual content. So as I said, the drugging, I'm putting in substance usage, but you could also technically put it over here. Ron ends up being fine. Everything works out okay. There's no interaction between him and the girl who drugged the chocolates. And throughout the rest of the series, romance is really limited to kissing and general kind of early teenage romance drama. Some other content to be aware of, there are disturbing imagery and creatures at various points. So for example, there's giant spiders at a couple of points throughout the books. And another creature that I think a lot of people might find disturbing are Dementors, which are the guards of the wizard prison, and they basically look like figures in these long black cloaks that are kind of floating ethereally, but they're also described as having like gray scabbed skin and a face that has no eyes. They feed off of strong emotions and suck out the happiness of those around them. So there's definitely content where if you have a sensitive reader, they might not enjoy this as much. However, overall, I think this series is really well done. One last piece of content that I want to go over is one that I have mentioned in other books before, but in the Harry Potter series, Harry does spend his summers with his aunt and uncle, who are not magical and want nothing to do with the magical community. They are verbally abusive to him and borderline neglectful because while they do technically meet his basic needs, they do it on the barest minimum level and sometimes don't even quite meet that. His clothing is all hand-me-downs from his cousin who is much larger than him and so none of his clothes fit him correctly. Also, his portion sizes are always extremely small and just other basic needs are barely met. As always, when those topics are dealt with in a series or in a book, I am going to put links in the description of the video for those who suspect child neglect or abuse or are experiencing neglect or abuse. Now, despite all of the content in this series, the lower end of the reading level I would recommend this for is fourth grade but the upper end I would say is, you know, 12th grade or even above that. This series really does grow up with its characters and the intensity of the books gets more so and gets darker as the series progresses. So this is definitely one where if you're trying to assess if it's right for your younger reader, I would recommend reading it first because you're going to know your reader better than I would. Personally, I started reading the series when I was in third grade, around eight years old, and I really enjoyed it, but I did stop at about book four, I think, before progressing to books five and on. However, it wasn't a very long break because I know that once the seventh book came out, I was the first one in my family to read it. Now, if I were to teach this book, what I would teach really would depend on the age level I'm working with, but if we're assuming that we're looking at a middle grade level, somewhere in middle school, I think that you could do a lot with just the world building aspect of it and take a more creative writing approach to it. You could use it as an example for how to write characters or how to write descriptions or world building in general. You could also use this series as an example of low fantasy. I went over this in my Hobbit video, but for those of you who are not familiar, low fantasy as opposed to high fantasy are fantasy books that are set within our world, so within our society or um, on Earth. 
And so there's a little bit more of a mixture of fantasy with real world elements. Whereas high fantasy would be a whole different world with its own different rules. So for Harry Potter, even though the magical world is a bit separated from the non-magical world, it still exists within the non-magical world at large. Our characters are familiar with places such as London. Another thing you could teach, um, especially if you're looking at a higher level, would be the idea of just characters in general. So I would focus on static versus dynamic characters. So static characters would be characters that don't change or develop throughout the course of a story. Whereas dynamic characters are a little bit more lifelike. They tend to make choices that change who they are. They tend to grow and develop throughout the series or throughout the story. And there's just a lot of great examples of characters throughout this series. Really, there's so many other angles that you could take with this series. If you were in an elementary school setting, you could integrate other subject matters as well. You could create potions by doing a science unit, or you could have students make their own mythological creatures or look up mythological creatures and do their own guidebook entry on them. There's really so much that you can do with this series, but I'm going to limit it to that. Now for the poster for this week, we have Harry Potter's iconic circular glasses and lightning bolt that looks like his scar that he has, one of his main identifiers throughout the series. Let me know what you think of the Harry Potter series in the comments below. Is this one that you have read or watched or enjoyed or not? Let me know if you have any other book recommendations. And as always, I hope that you have a marvelous week and a wonderful read.